Welcome back to America on the Road with Chris Teague, Jack Nierad back with you. And it is road test time, perhaps my favorite segment. I always like to talk to Chris about cars and cars he's... Well, I was driving a vehicle that uh, costs about that or maybe a little bit more, the Volkswagen uh, Golf R, a vehicle that you once owned, uh, pretty much the same model year, very similar to the vehicle I tested. Um, This is essentially the hot hatchback on steroids, right? I mean, this is GTI Plus uh, with incredible bells and whistles and and, um, technology. Uh, brought to bear to make this uh, a super handling kind of vehicle. Uh, 315 horsepower from its turbocharged two liter four cylinder engine. That's kind of just the start of it, but that's a ton of horsepower. Uh, It competes with a vehicle you now own, (laughs) the the GR Corolla from Toyota. Honda uh, Civic Type R is probably in that ballpark too. Um, It has an all wheel drive system uh, with torque vectoring. Uh, You know, one of the key pieces of technology that goes into its performance. And it has various drive modes, comfort, sport, race, special drift and individual. And I I like individual, of course, because I'm an individualist. Um, Drift mode in this kind of vehicle is an interesting take too. Um, It is a practical vehicle in that it will seat uh, up to five, I guess, and uh, has plenty of room. It's a hatchback, It's it's a golf basically. Um, so that kind of makes sense. Uh, but it also has this incredible performance. Uh, the vehicle I drove costs about $46,000. Uh, that, that's with the manual transmission. And this is the last year or 2024 is the last year for the manual transmission. And, uh, I like that. I like the involvement of it. It's actually slower <laughs> zero to 60 than the vehicle with the, uh, dual clutch transmission. But uh, about five seconds, zero to 60, so that's good. Pretty good fuel efficiency. Uh, 30 miles per gallon on the highway or around there. Um, I'm talking about it, but you drove it for a long time, Chris. Uh, tell me your overall reaction to Golf R. Yeah, I was. I got a little bit burned. I had to end up lemon lawing my car, but uh, you know, I think I miss it still. Uh, it's incredibly quick. It's quicker than you would think it would be. The all-wheel drive system is fantastic. The interior and the configuration reminds me of an Audi, so it's very Audi-like. It's an upscale Volkswagen. And you mentioned the drive modes and the performance, and I will tell you that even though the performance is there, the car never really felt like it wanted to do all of the things that it is advertised to be able to do. Uh, you know, drift mode, it it will reluctantly do a drift uh, for a little while before shutting it off. Uh, so, you know, I think it's a fantastic car. It's much more practical than my GR Corolla. Um, and like I said, I do I do still miss it, even though I had some issues. Yeah, I mean, I'm interested to, to hear that you like it in, in some ways or, or for, for the practical practical purposes more so than uh, the GR Corolla that you have, because it does seem very practical. It's also, as you say, upscale, Napa leather seats with blue accents, very cool inside, digital gauge cluster. It also has a... Um, driver information system that puts a lot of controls into the touch screen, which kind of bugs, <laughs> kind of bugs big time, especially if you're new to it. Maybe you came to terms with it. Uh, I, I don't think I have yet. I did over time. I will tell you that I appreciate the GR Corolla's uh, manual uh, climate control systems and an actual volume knob rather than the sliders, that the touch uh, sensitive slider uh, controls that you get in the Volkswagen. Volkswagen's infotainment is not that complicated, though, so I think they did about as well as they could have with it. Yeah, I do like the digital gauge cluster, the instrument cluster, and and kind of the, uh, I think, F1-style uh, tachometer display you can have that, you know, makes it very plain uh, for uh, simpletons like me, what gear I'm in and, uh, you know, <laughs> if it's time to shift or not. Uh, All of that's good. Uh, I wonder, too, about all this tech, because all this tech certainly goes to make it more expensive. I don't know that it goes to make it that much better. I mean, curious as to your thoughts on that. I agree. You know, my I had the 2023 anniversary edition, so I don't know if yours has a head up display, but mine had a head up display and and plenty of tech. And that was ultimately its downfall. Right. Uh, That was uh, the safety equipment malfunctioning is why it was lemon lawed. And there's now a class action lawsuit against Volkswagen for the GTI and the Golf R. So, you know, I think that you you reach a limit. And then these cars, it's about the driving experience. It's not necessarily about uh, the touchscreen and things like that, though. Some of those features are nice. Yeah. 
I mean, I don't know how many people race their Golf R. I, I suppose a lot of people do. But at the same time, I, I think in terms of just fun or fun per dollar, maybe you can have as much fun with a GTI. Uh, you won't go as fast, but maybe you don't even realize you're not going as fast. You're probably having as much fun. I love the fact that this has a manual transmission, but that's going away. So um, I, I like the Golf R a lot. I think even at $46,000 with all the tech you get, it is a good value. Uh, it is practical. There's all that. It has all of that going for it. But at the same time, maybe there's other, other Golfs like the GTI that... Uh, for the masses, uh, we'll find a, a better value. Yeah, you know, I say I miss it, but the GR Corolla was almost $10,000 less expensive and I enjoy driving it more. Uh, the driving experience is far more engaging, so I agree with that.